somebody tries to perform a citizen's arrest upon him and his gauleiters and his lieutenants uh, who suffer similar fates. And so in public opinion, uh, this man is destroyed in Britain because it's seen that he lied us into a war in which a million people perished and which cascaded this extremism around the world that we've been talking about. But companies keep hiring him, banks in particular, but oil companies and other corporate interests to a fantastic tune. It's never been known in British politics before for a former prime minister to do other than retire to a country estate, sedately uh, advise us from time to time on international it's or a delayed, domestic matters. It's a delayed load. payoff. Yeah, but now we've got a situation where the new class of politicians are being told, if you play ball with the right interests, they'll look after you after your term of office is over. And that is just fatal for the political system. I agree. Because uh, if you're legislating for banks and the military industrial complex and other commercial interests, in their interests with a view to them hiring you when you're finished, how can the public expect good governance as a result? Sure, so how does it all end? How does it all end? Because it's clearly the fruit is rotting now. They're getting away with everything. And historically, that causes megalomania. How does it end? I mean, you predicted how all the other stuff would go the last decade. Well, What's going to happen now? I think it'll end okay, Alex. And that's where may maybe you and I would part company at this point in this sense. Because I believe that the fruit is rotting, is falling off the trees, in the sense that people have absolutely no faith in the political class which governs them. And they're right not to do so. Oh, no, I agree uh, with you. But, I agree uh, with you. That does not yet have a form, a physical form of an alternative power, at least not in your country or mine. In many other parts of Europe, for example, an anti-political class is uh, beginning to germinate, to continue your, uh, your uh, metaphor, uh, and is uh, bearing new fruit. Some of it I like, some of it I don't like, but it's all uh, new power coming through because people have entirely lost faith in the old ways. And uh, the old ways are no longer able to govern as they were. Otherwise, we'd now be at war with Syria and Iran and with Russia and China on the other side of that war. In the British Parliament, we stopped dead the juggernaut of war, which was about to take off and begin bombing Syria. Because we did so, President Obama was not able to take off and do the heavy lifting, the majority of the bombing. We stopped the war on Syria. No, George, I, I agree with you. In it, and Iran would be a belligerent, and goodness knows where that would have all ended up. We stopped that because the political class is now terrified of the public. In Britain, uh, the politicians know that the public hate them, regard them as thieves who fill their own pockets with the public's money sure. and legislate for corporate interests, for vested interests, rather than in the interests of the people. And sooner or later, that will find its expression in new political parties, new political personalities, or radical changes in oh, the I leadership agree. and direction of the parties. Well, let me we add have. this. Let me add this, George. When I was in the UK last year to cover and protest Bilderberg, the, almost all the police, you name it, were telling us, hey, we're on your side. We hate the people in there. We know this is going on. We know there's a shadow government. And and I re and it was across the political spectrum. People were really angry in England. Uh, you know, they're north of uh, London and Wadford. They're in the UK. So, no, we don't disagree. There's a huge awakening. But the political class is militarizing and racing to authoritarianism. And having the NSA and, uh, you know, your NSA spy on Parliament, spy on the Senate... To the point of, I mean, the battle's being joined is what I'm saying. No, I, well, I agree with that. Uh, I, I'm just, I think, a little more confident uh, than you. Perhaps I'm not, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, that we will prevail. Uh, I don't believe we will go to authoritarianism. Fascism is not possible in the United States or the United Kingdom. I don't think the people would tolerate it. But that's not a fruit that falls off the tree. You have to shake the tree to make sure that people uh, avoid that uh, perilous uh, fate. Uh, on that, definitely, we would agree. Uh, it, all that's required for the triumph of evil 
is that good men and women do nothing. That's right. And we've got to make sure, and uh, you're busy on that, so am I. We've got to make sure that the people do what's necessary sure. to do to stop that fate. Well, I want to get you back as soon as you go down there to try to cover his ranch and give us coverage. And georgegalloway.com, uh, respectparty.org. I really appreciate you spending time with us. And uh, you've really went up against a lot. You know, they tried to destroy you when you exposed the Iraq war. And we, we all admire courage. So thank you so much for your time, George Galloway. Thank you, Alex. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Wow, that was a powerful interview. And that guy's got a lot of courage, folks. I mean... I mean, let me tell you, they were killing people over in the UK opposing the war. And he was getting threatened. They were trying to put him in jail and stuff. And so you can say what you want about George Galloway. He has got a lot of courage. And we appreciate him coming on the show. And I hope those movies get made. All right, I'm going to come back, take phone calls in the next segment, the one after that. I'm going to talk to Scott and uh, Rod and Ed and Patrick and JD and others. Get ready with your comments straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at real Alex Jones. But everything Galloway said, you can prove. We have dangerous paramilitary armies being built in the U.S. Well, the issue is I'm not even worried if they had militarized trained units of police to deal with the, you know, the, the heavily armed threats sometimes because I want us to be able to have guns. So sometimes it's going to be bad guys that are heavily armed. My issue is that they're trained with the citizens where you don't instantly do what they say. They start tasering you or attack you. That's all military type checkpoint training. And, you know, the TSA training and the checkpoint training, that's all militarization, martial law stuff. It's the martial law that's bad, not the cops, you know, in SWAT team outfits. The problem is, is that now all the units want to be in SWAT teams and now they come to a regular, you know, visit because they heard about a domestic dispute. So they come with a SWAT team. That is the militarization. That is the problem, the overuse of it. And uh, now the establishment's talking about it. Which just means it's become so ubiquitous that people are getting scared of it. Uh, folks, the military is routinely in plain clothes with the SWAT teams, just so everybody knows, since the late 80s. We've got all the documents on that in my uh, film, The Road to Tyranny, which really is a seminal documentary. Um, let's uh, go right now to Scott in Washington. Go ahead. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Oh, yes, Alex. I'm so glad you brought up that piece with uh Al Sharpton and the race hustling and all that. Let me give you the irony of Mr. Reverend Mac Daddy Pimp Sharpton. Now, go back to 1964, and I know you had Reverend uh, C. Bryant on, and you mentioned this in passing about Robert Byrd being a part of the KKK. And, you know, this is the guy that filibustered the uh, 1964 Act, but most, there's a little factoid that most people either don't know or have forgotten about is the fact that not only did he filibuster it, but what he used to filibuster it was some scientific study from a guy by the name of Boas stating that the uh, black brain was inferior to the white brain because it didn't weigh as much. So it wasn't because he uh, ejected on some kind of a you know, constitutional ground. And that was all yeah. a eugenics thing, like scamming weights on the people they chose to do the test. So none of it even means anything. No, I mean, obviously... Al Sharpton got mad, and so the rest of MSNBC, about that unifying speech Rand Paul gave. So he basically did you know what in the punch bowl. I mean, that, that's all he's doing. Get to 46 years later when that piece of experiment died, you, you've got him sitting up there, one of the people eulogizing that his female was talking about, oh, yeah, well, he was a part of it and stuff, but the guy changed, which was a good part because he never actually did. But he's sitting up here talking about what Rand Paul might have done in 1963, when he was all maybe a year old, when that thing passed. So, you know, that's one of the ironies. You know, Exactly. The They've taken the Civil Rights Act and used parts of it to make Christians pay for abortions. I mean, churches shouldn't have to do that. And you should be able to, to you know, not rent to somebody if, if, if they're a devil worshiper and you're a Christian, or vice versa, if you're atheist. And, 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 and you know, the whole issue is there's problems, there's evils on both sides. Rand Paul's just trying to be honest and saying, look, you know, uh, should you be able to have private clubs? Should they be able to have stuff, you know, private golf course where, you know, say black folks say we don't, this or that. Just because it's racist or whatever it is or white folks do it, that's somewhat of the freedom. And we can debate that. The point is, is that Rand Paul is not a racist. Rand Paul's trying to unify people, and that's why they don't like him.
because we're all getting spied on by the NSA. We're all getting foreign banks looting our bank accounts. Thank you so much for the call. We're going to come back in overdrive. Infowars.com forward slash show. If your station doesn't carry it, audio video are feeds are right there. Prisonplanet.tv. I'm going to cram in as many calls as I can. Start your engines back in 70 seconds. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com.